Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with the Adventures of the Memory Makers. I am excited about today's video because I can finally get rid of this boat anchor that's been riding around on the front of our camper ever since we got it. And what I'm talking about is this 67 pound, 68 pound lead acid 100 amp hour deep cycle battery that's been powering our 12 volt needs in our camper. And ever since I got this camper, and even before we got the camper, I had in my mind how I wanted to do the electrical setup on it. And we have multiple campers, multiple boats, golf carts, four wheelers. We just have lots of batteries to take care of. And this is just another battery I had to take care of all winter long. And there's no reason in my mind that there should be a battery in these campers when you're not using them in our situation because it's just something else I gotta take care of. I gotta keep a battery monitor on, I gotta check the water in the cells. You know, it's just, you know, when you take that times five or six batteries, you know, it, it's something that you gotta deal with, you know, all winter long. My original plan was I was going to get rid of this battery and power the entire camper 12 volt needs off of a portable power station. So it took a few years to get all the pieces put together, to get the time to make it happen and get the knowledge that I needed to make this work the way I wanted to. But I'm glad to say the day has finally come and we're saying goodbye to this battery. So you're probably wondering, how exactly am I gonna do that? Well, I tried to keep it as simple as possible because if you watch our videos, you know that's how I operate. And I had the, the perfect power station in mind when I found it, and it just took a while to get all these pieces put together and find the right tongue box to hold it. If you follow our channel and remember back, oh gosh, I don't know, four or five, six months ago, we did a video on the Lice City AC heavy duty power box. And that, when I stumbled across that, was immediately what I knew I was going to use to power this camper. And inside of this tongue box is exactly where that power station is sitting right now and I'm going to show you how easy this is to get this all to work out. So not only did we go from a lead acid battery to a lithium battery but we're using it in a power station that is removable from the camper that I can take to work with me because it rides around the back seat of my truck every day and powers my tool battery chargers and my other AC needs that I have on the job site um, very well. I mean this thing has just been rock solid. love it to death. Um, so to find the right tongue box to make it all fit and work out you know, two thumbs up on that. And we just got back from a six day trip on the road over 2,000, like 2,400 miles actually down to Texas and back. And uh, it, it performed flawlessly. You know, it, it had all the power that we needed because we are DC campers. And then that's a, a really critical term to understand in relation to this video is that, you know, everything in this camper with the exception of that air conditioner is DC powered. And the only DC appliance that we take with us is Cindy's hairdryer because I just can't get her to sign on to the idea if she sticks her head out the window while we drive down the road, her hair will dry pretty quick. Um, for some reason, she just isn't wanting to go with that idea. <laughs> but uh, So that's the only AC appliance that we take. Everything else is either DC or propane powered in the camper. So as I used the camper and followed the power usage with a Victron Bluetooth uh, 500 amp shunt, so I could see how much power we were actually using with the devices that we used. I realized a couple of things. One, you know, I don't need a lot of power. You know, we don't consume mass amounts of DC power. So the idea that, you know, that I needed, you know, 200 amp hours or 300 amp hours of 12 volt power up here for us, that just wasn't the case. And two, you know, the 12 volt lead acid battery fell below 12 volts so quickly you know, it got down to like 50% and you're below the 12 volt range, which isn't good on your appliances, your refrigerators and things like that. They will run. It's just not good on them. So when you look at the discharge profile between a lead acid and a lithium, the lithium is just so much better. So, you know, I knew that I was going to switch to lithium. I just didn't want to build, you know, a power station in my tongue box that had to stay there. Because if you go and put a lithium battery in your tongue box and then put a solar controller and then an AC charger, you know, and inverters, you essentially built a power station in your tongue box that is fixed. You can't take it out and use it somewhere else. Whereas with this, it's portable. You know, I can pop this in here real quickly, you know, hook it up, we go camp. We come back, I unhook it, and it goes to work with me. So just a really slick, neat idea. 
And I've worked with several owners already to you know, get setups like this. I've built tongue boxes like this for other owners. I'm just now finally getting around to showing you ours. So let's pop the camera off and I'll take you through a walkthrough of how this actually works. So I've removed the power station so I can give you a, a brief overview of what the tongue box looks like without the power station in it. So essentially I broke the tongue box into two sections. I've got the storage section here on the left side and then the power section here on the right side. And I've got the strap, you know, just lifted up here over the lid, keeping it out of the way. And I made essentially a, a small boxed in area down here on the floor out of a frame, out of polyvinyl board. I use that stuff a lot on camper projects because it just works so well. But that gives a place, dedicated place for the power station to sit so it doesn't slide around. And this strap actually came with the power station. It's a very nice strap. It's got a very nice clasp on it that um, I put around it and locks it in place and it just can't go anywhere. So inside the box here, I took the covers off of my switches so that you can see I made a small shelf here in the corner out of sheet metal. And then I only have two switches that control the camper. So the power station itself has a master switch on it. And then I use three position, three position 30 amp toggle switches to actually operate the power needs of the camper here in the box. So everything is wired with 10 gauge wire, 20 amp fuses, because like I said, once I discovered how little amount of power that we actually needed to operate with, I didn't need to go with eight gauge wire and you know, 30 amp fuses because we just don't have that much demand. So this is how simple it is. So I'm gonna go through the switches with you here first. On the right hand side, this switch here is essentially my power selection switch. So right now it's in the center, so it's in the off position. So there's no power going to the camper. There's no battery in, no power station anyway, so it doesn't have power going to it. But in the center is off. If I flip that to the down position, then that selects the power station when it's sitting here, you know, in position ready to go. So that means that the battery, the 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium battery inside my power station, then is powering all the 12 volt needs of the camper. So that power flows through and I got everything done with inline fuses. Everything's labeled on the inline fuse. So you see you know, what it is that you're actually going for or what that inline fuse controls. So in the event that the battery in my power station gets low or we see a need that we need to supplement the power and, and save the battery in the power station for use on the road, we can flip this up and you can see it says, maybe if I can get the camera to read it, maybe not, <laughs> but up the top, if we flip it all the way up, now all of a sudden that is coming from an external power source. And what I mean by external power source is over here on the side of my tongue box, if I can get there without tripping over something, what we have are a, or actually is a Anderson 30 amp power pole connection that you know comes in this covered port that's watertight, seals up. And what I can do is plug in this extension cable with one hand, it's kind of difficult. Get the pin. There we go. So now that can go down to another battery that we carry with us. We used to carry a great big um, portable power station with us, but now we just carry this Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with the hub. And we'll have a video coming out on that soon. Uh, really like that. That's been a lot of fun to use. It's really neat. I like multi-purpose items and, and that does multiple purposes. It's not just a battery. It's just a really neat uh, power source that we use quite a bit. So we could hook up to that and power the camper totally off of that. You know, and, and one 100 amp hour battery is going to get us probably four to five days off grid with no uh, external power being put back into the batteries. So this takes care of the power selection switch. The left hand switch, it actually selects the power input source that powers the MPPT charge controller inside of the power station. And what I mean by that is we can either flip it down here to the bottom and have the solar panels send power to the MPPT charge controller, or we can flip it up here and have the 12 volt power from the tow vehicle actually power that MPPT charge controller through a 12 volt power inverter that bumps the power up to 48 volts at six amps, which will max out that Victron 7515 uh, solar charge controller that I put inside of the power station. So I know it's a lot of numbers, it's a lot of abbreviations, um, but you know, it's, it's really pretty simple when you, when you break it down and understand what's actually going on. And then it's black, don't know how well it's gonna show up, but in the event that we have AC power, 
and we don't have solar and we want to charge the, the battery inside the, the power station, we can use this um, expert power lithium battery charger, which connects up to the power station. To power our AC charger uh, inside the tum box, if we need to uh, charge the, the lithium iron phosphate battery in our power station, we have this simple 120 volt male plug here on the side. And what we do is if we have AC power available, we just run an extension cord to that, plug in, that powers the AC charger inside the box, which then charges the lithium battery inside the camper. So let me put the uh, camera back on the tripod and I'll show you how easy this is to hook up. So let's say we're getting ready to go camp. We need to get some power in our camper. It's this easy. I go and pick up my Lycity AC heavy duty power box and I drop it down inside of that area that I made that keeps it from sliding around. So it just sits down in there like that. I bring the strap over the top and I feed that through this latch or kitsch or clasp, I guess would be a better buckle, whatever you want to call it, like that. Strap it down. It rode 2,400 miles and never went anywhere. So then I just have three simple connections to make. The black one here is the only one that is specific to uh, a certain plug. And the black plug, the Anderson 50 amp plug here, comes from the solar power selector switch. And it goes in the black connector here on the top. And that powers that MPPT charge controller inside of the box. And like I said, I upgraded this. And that, that's one of the things I really like about this box is someone like me can play around and do different things with this box. I upgraded the original 10 amp charge controller to the Victron 7515. And it just allows me to charge that battery faster and, and cleaner. Uh, just really like that modification there. And then we've got a red plug here. And this is actually the power that goes from the power station to the selector switch and then on to the camper. And it plugs in right below that. And then there's one other one and it's a red one as well. And the gray ports on this Live City power station are all bi-directional. So it doesn't matter where I plug this in at, it all goes to the battery and can come out of the battery as well. So this is from the AC charger, that expert power AC charger right there on the side. And it plugs in just like that. So now we're ready to go camping. You know, I'm gonna flip the switch down to power the camper off the power station. You're probably gonna hear a beep. It's pretty quiet, I heard the beep. And that is our um, LP detector and carbon monoxide detector in the camper. You know, when that beeps, then you know that the camper is now powered up with power. So right now, the camper is powered entirely off of this portable power station with a 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery inside of it. And for a 12 volt camper, DC campers like Cindy and I, this is just an awesome setup. You need more power than what you have on board in this one. You can easily supplement it with the external power port on the side. I mean, to me, it's just a really simple, slick setup that utilizes something that I already have, you know, and, and I don't have that maintenance headache all winter long. So if you're still watching at this point, you're probably either really bored or you're really curious as to what I do with the power that's coming back to the battery from the onboard load center or the WIFCO power distribution box inside the camper. So that's a real simple question. There is no power coming back from that distribution center in the camper to this battery. I know that some of them, like ours, is an auto detect and they market it as being able to charge a lithium battery. But if you look at the, the information they, that you can find online about that, the way they do that is through a time charge profile versus a state of charge charge profile. And I just don't like that way of charging a lithium battery. So that was the reason that I disconnect the two halves from each other in that load center. So essentially I break those apart you have a 120 volt side now, you have a 12 volt side, there's no interconnect between the two, so there is no power that comes back from that to this battery. And that was the reason I added the Expert Power Lithium Iron Phosphate Charger here. You know, it's, it's probably not as good a charger as what my Victron charger is at home on the bench, but it's more than adequate and does a fine job of charging the battery when we're out on the road if we need to use it. And so far we haven't needed to use it. The solar panels have done well, um, and also that power converter. So that takes care of the power coming back from the, the camper itself and the uh, distribution center there. But then, you know, if you're really sharp, you know that there is 12 volt power that can come from your tow vehicle to charge your lead acid battery in your tongue box as well. So here's the, here's the kicker with that. So when you switch to a lithium battery like this or a lithium power source, like a power station, it doesn't have to be this one, but any power station, 
That lithium battery has such a low internal resistance to it that it could essentially dump all of its power from the lithium battery into your car's electrical system so fast make your head spin. And when that happens, bad things happen in the car electrical system. And with today's cars, the way they're computer controlled, you know, all the electrical systems in them, you fry your electrical system in the car and you got a big problem. And I just didn't want to take that chance. So I do it a little differently than maybe some do, but there's no direct connection between the tow vehicle battery and this lithium battery. Instead, I use that power converter, which takes the 12 volt power out of that seven way whip and switches it from 12 to 48 volts. And then that 48 volts powers the MPPT charge controller inside of my power station. And then that charges the battery. So there's no direct connection between the tow vehicle battery and the battery in this. And to me, you know, everything is fused. There's safety with that. And you don't have to worry about frying the, you know, the vehicle's electrical system with your lithium battery in your camper. I know some people out there say, oh, you can charge it with the, the alternator in your car. You can until you can't. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm, I play it safe and I just didn't want to take that chance. So at the end of the day, you know, we've got standalone systems. You know, we drop this in and go. Now, here's the great thing. When we get back from camping, I take my switches, make sure they're in the center and the off position, which they are. I unplug three plugs. The AC plug coming from the charger, the black plug coming from the solar panel selector or the solar charge selection power, and then the actual uh, power wire going to the you know, selector switch here. I undo my strap, which takes all about 10 seconds. Pull that back up over the top. I lift this power station up and out. I put it back in my truck and I go to work. You know, there's no more batteries sitting in the same year round that I have to babysit and take care of. And to me, I like that. And an added benefit of using the power station like this is, you know, let's assume that for some strange reason, we need AC power at the campground for some reason. We've got it right here. This has got a built in 1000 watt, uh, 1400 watt surge um, AC inverter in it. They can run Cindy's hair dryer if, if she absolutely needs to. So we do have AC power available to us. Um, but it's just in the form of the power station. So to me, this is a really slick, simple system. And, you know, it has worked so well. You know, I, I thought about this a long time, how I wanted to do it. You know, when I found this power station, I knew that that's the one I was going to use. It's worked great. I mean, I just two thumbs up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please, you know, leave them in the comments below. Send us an email. I'll do my best to, to help you guys out. Like I said, I've already helped. Gosh, I don't know five, six guys, five, six owners, um, work through, you know, doing something like this already. Um, you know, and the more the merrier, you know, because, you know, the, the more batteries I can reduce or eliminate in my life, you know, the less work I've got. So if you need a hundred amp hour deep cycle battery, I've got a nice one for sale. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching and until the next video, happy camping. Mm -hmm.